primarily an editorial illustrator. Even though I never really studied to be an illustrator or really planned to be an illustrator, it turned out that it was really, it kind of suited my temperament. I have a very short attention span, so the deadlines are good for me. I'm very eclectic. I like dealing with a lot of different ideas. And it turned out that illustration was what I was, I think, good at. Well, now pretty much I work uh, predominantly for newspapers, the LA Times, the New York Times. But I work regularly for the New Yorker, Vanity Fair, GQ, just about all the magazines and newspapers around. I've illustrated just about every topic you can think of. The subjects uh, require attention. I'm not just trying to illustrate other people's ideas, I'm trying to bring something to the table myself. Hopefully it gets them to be intrigued enough to read what it's about and it complements or it enhances the experience. Most of the pieces that I, I do now are, are, are about current events, things that are happening at the moment, something that's really relevant. And I like that. That's fine for me. I like doing that. I strip things down to their bare essentials. That's probably what I, uh, is a good characteristic of, of the way I work. I try to stay away from specific time elements, specific fashion elements, place elements. I try to keep things almost in this generic world. I don't deal with specific faces. I deal with these faces that are kind of archetypes. That's the way I think. I think in these very archetypical kinds of ways. I like things that have an emotional quality to them. If someone has a piece that really goes to the heart of something emotional, I get jazzed about that. Or if there's a political subject that is happening and I get a chance to make a comment about that, that's really good. A lot of these uh, topics are very complicated. In order for an illustrator to be successful, they have to have a, a personal voice. They have to have a personal visual language that they use. You develop that by working, by drawing, by painting, by reading, by listening, and uh, you bring that to the table, you bring that to uh, your work. But it's, you know, illustration is a strange thing because it's, uh, you know, people look at it and next thing you know it's in the wastebasket. It's not something that, that lasts, it's very transitory. I've seen a lot of changes. First of all, with a lot of the technology, a lot of the designers can, can do things in Photoshop and these different programs they have and put things together. They don't really sometimes need an illustrator. I'm not really that good at it. I know a few little Photoshop techniques and things like that, but that's about it. It seems like more and more, it's a lot of it is computer generated, which is a young person's kind of gig. You know, the older I get, the less I'm in, in the mix. But the phone still rings, yes. I'm from Rhode Island, from North Providence. I went to URI and studied fine arts. 67 to 71, and it was an interesting time. I had good teachers at URI. They were pretty hip. They had all these guys from New York who were in galleries and doing all this great work. They frowned upon anything figurative. And I had no plans to be an, an illustrator. Uh, I wanted to be a conceptual fine artist. I needed to find something that I can grab onto. I remember exactly the first gig I got. It was a time when I was trying to be an artist, a fine artist, and I was getting nowhere. And so I got really discouraged. So I decided not to draw or paint anything. And I got a job on a fishing boat for about a year and I hated it. And I realized that I had to do something creative. So I got my studio back and started making art. I also had these drawings. I said I was gonna to try to take them around and see if I can get a job illustrating. And I said, if I get a job illustrating, I'll become an illustrator. If I sell a painting, I'll become an artist. I sold a, uh, an illustration to the real paper for $35. And basically the next day I shut down my studio and I became an illustrator. And I never looked back. Uh, the physical process involves sketching. Well, I start out with a pencil, or I'll sketch with a brush. I first of all have to draw on my own. I have to paint on my own. So I have to develop my vocabulary. I have to have a bank of images that are in my head. 
a way of thinking, a way of seeing. And you develop that through sketching and painting and being interested in all aspects of life. You have to be ready to go. You have to be ready to hit the mark. You have to be kind of a fertile ground. And that's how, I, that's how I come up with ideas. I sit down and I'll do sketches and sketches and sketches and sketches and sketches until I see something. The hard part is coming up with the vision of it. Once I see it, then it's easy. And that can come at the first sketch or it can come at the hundredth sketch. I started out painting, but I don't pursue painting. I don't, I don't pursue gallery work. I do sell paintings and I have been galleries, but I do it more for my own visual development. I don't know if there's a difference between being an artist and an illustrator. People can say it's art and that's fine, but all I know is I illustrate. I like to deal with the human dilemma, the things that we all share, what it means to be a human being, the things that we feel. Darkness. There is a lady who lives on the dark side of the moon. Nobody ever sees her. She wears a beautiful silver dress. Nobody ever sees it. I would like to, to get a little bit more involved in narrative work. I've been experimenting with animation. I'd like to try and explore that more. I uh, write little short stories and animate those, narrating poems visually maybe a little bit more leaning towards the narrative, which I haven't really done very much of. I mean, I've illustrated stories, but I haven't really done it on my own very much. The irony is, is that the more personal you get, the more universal you get. The more you can dig down deep inside yourself, the more people can relate to that, because the farther down you go is the wellspring that everyone taps into. It's, it goes to the idea of collective consciousness or something like that. But it all boils down to being in touch with yourself and in touch with the things that matter to you. And the more passionate you are, the more it's going to resonate in your work. Creating is the thing that I need to do. I learned that a long time ago. It's not a hobby, it's not something that uh, I think is a cool thing to do, it's something that I need to do. If I'm not creating, I'm not feeling good. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Draw pictures, make images, because that's who I am, basically.